Hello everyone and welcome back to another video from the Aspiring Medics. I'm Arisma, a second year medical student at King's College London and today I'm going to be taking you through what the integrated teaching style is like. So we have three objectives for today's session. The first being understand how the integrated medicine course is structured. Secondly, we're going to describe the different aspects of an integrated med school. And thirdly, we're going to teach you how to know if the integrated teaching style is for you. Just to recap, there are three main teaching styles in med schools across the UK. The first one is the traditional teaching style in which there's a preclinical and clinical split. Um, and that's mostly found at Oxbridge. Um, we then have the integrated teaching style that I'll be taking you through today and there's also PBL or CBL so that's problem-based learning and case-based learning. So just before we start I want to point out that teaching style is not the only factor to consider while picking universities to apply to. There are multiple factors to look at including location, cost of living, the opportunities there, what kind of a city it is, whether it's a city or the countryside and all of these factors are extremely important because you will be spending five to six years at this school so make sure that the school is a perfect fit for you and on your needs. Do not just base your decisions on the rankings of schools because in the long run, in five to six years, that's not going to matter. And what will matter is whether you enjoy staying in that place. For more information, you can check out our website, especially our Choosing Universities page, which gives you a lot of information about this. So let's get started by looking at the course structure in an integrated medical school. Firstly, an integrated medicine course will teach you scientific knowledge and the theory alongside clinical training. So you get practical exposure. There will also be a stronger focus on body systems rather than disciplines and this links to the next point that says that schools can either follow a systems-based approach or a spiral curriculum. You can find more information about this on our website but what do I mean by this? By this I mean that you will be covering all the different aspects of a particular body system at the same time. For example, if you're looking at cardiology, you will look at the anatomy of the chest so that includes the heart and the lungs. Um, you will then be moving on to the physiology of the cardiovascular system and and you then cover say pharmacology as well as pathology and look at how what the common diseases are and how to treat them um, instead of an alternative approach where you would go through the anatomy of the whole body then the physiology and so on so this is a systems-based approach where you look at all the different aspects of a body system together and this helps deepen your understanding of medicine and of that particular body system and at the same time you form connections and links in your brain which helps you with memorization now you can also have a spiral curriculum in integrated medicine schools. Now keep in mind this isn't an either or situation and both can coexist at the same time. Um, in a spiral curriculum you will form a baseline of knowledge in your first year and then every subsequent year you will be building up on that knowledge so you will learn more complex information in every subsequent year. For example this could mean you go through the anatomy and physiology of the heart in year one. In your second year you can go through pathology and common diseases and maybe in your third year you go through pharmacology and this is how you build up on your knowledge. Lastly, because an integrated medicine course will teach you the theory alongside clinical training, you will get early patient contact and you will develop your clinical skills from early on in your career. Now, another thing that I want to point out is that these three teaching styles are not mutually exclusive and most schools will have a combination of two or all three of these teaching styles. For example, at King's, even though it is an integrated school, we do have a preclinical and clinical split because in year one, we barely know enough and barely have enough information to go into placement. So in year one, that is our preclinical year, we just go through the theory and develop a baseline of knowledge so that year two onwards, we can go on placement. So over here, because I go to King's, I've just just mentioned some sample modules so you can see what a year in an integrated medical school will look like and just how holistically they tackle medicine. So in year one, my first module was Foundations of Medical Science, which was a biochemistry module. We went through cellular and molecular biology, genetics, nutrition, and metabolism. Uh, we then had a module on physiology and anatomy of systems. So first we looked at the limbs um, and the fundamentals of anatomy, histology, physiology, and pharmacology. Then while we were learning cardiovascular and respiratory physiology, we were also looking at chest anatomy at the same time. So you can see how this is a systems-based approach. And while we were looking at GI and renal physiology, we were learning anatomy of the abdomen at the same time. 
We then had a module about other related disciplines. So this included psychology, sociology, epidemiology, immunology, and health informatics. So you can see how medicine is tackled from these various perspectives. It is not just about hardcore science and biology, but we also look at the humanities aspect of medicine. And lastly, we had a clinical skills module. Uh, like I said, this is an integrated medical school. So we have early clinical contacts. So we were trained in clinical skills, including history taking, checking vitals, doing CPR and so on. We also look at health humanities, philosophy and the healthcare system in the UK. Now in year two, we have the switch to clinical training and that's when it really becomes an integrated school. And so this year we will be going on placement and this is what my modules look like. So I have a science to clinical practice module in which we have four different blocks of six weeks each and we look at one body system in detail. So I'm doing human development, which is about pregnancy and early childhood, supporting life, which is acutely unwell patients, often in the ICU, inflammation and aging. And this is supplemented by my placement in those specific wards in the hospital. I also have my clinical placement, like I mentioned, in the hospital, which is once a week, and at a GP practice, which is once a week. In my third year, this changes to hospital placement twice a week and a mental health placement once a week. Um, in integrated schools, as you progress through your medical curriculum, your placement increases. So the number of days that you're on placement increases. So while in my second year, I'm going for placement twice a week. In my third year, this increases to thrice a week. And in my fourth and fifth year, I will be going for placement pretty much every day. I also have a student selected component where you carry out independent learning in any field of interest. This can range from learning a new language to even conducting biological research. And then my last module is clinical research where we go through some essential research methods, auditing, quality improvement projects, and so on. And these are all very important skills for healthcare workers. So that's it for our first objective. We're now going to look at the different aspects of an integrated med school. So how is teaching delivered? Firstly, of course, we have lectures, which is common to all universities across the UK. Um, these cover core content, which is outlined in the syllabus. I had around 10 to 15 lectures a week in my first year. That is my preclinical year. But this decreases once you move into your clinical years to around five to seven lectures per week. This is delivered by professors and they explain fundamental concepts and may even link it to disease pathology. An important point to note is that during lectures, you cannot ask questions. So you are just passively taking in information and taking notes how you see fit. The next thing is anatomy demonstrations. So schools will either offer pro sections where a demonstrator will be cutting open the body and showing you the different organs or dissections where you will be doing this yourself. Although keep in mind that this all may be online because of COVID as was the case with me. Um, this is just a practical approach to learning the anatomy covered in lectures. Next, you also have tutorials. So although tutorials also exist in the Oxbridge system, this is not the same. We have around two to three per week. This is a discussion in groups of 10 to 15 students and there is one facilitator. You normally go through a worksheet which gives you an opportunity to apply knowledge covered in lectures in a more practical setting and in a more clinical setting. Please note that integrated schools do not require you to write essays for your tutorials. That's just an Oxbridge or traditional teaching style thing. Next, we also have lab work and histology sessions. Just want to preface this by saying that these are extremely rare and will probably only happen in your first few years of med school. These are just um, an opportunity for you to understand the biological and molecular mechanisms that govern the different aspects of medicine. And as usual, you can link the structure of cells and molecules to their function, which is very interesting. We also have placement, classic of integrated med schools, which is an opportunity to observe doctors, practice clinical skills and interact with patients in real life. You should note that you will be required to maintain a portfolio of all the skills you've practiced. This can include history taking, taking blood and so on. And lastly, there are opportunities to ask questions from your professors and facilitators. This is via Q&A sessions, uh, which may be online via Zoom or during office hours where professors just have a dedicated hour where you can pop in and ask any doubts and uh, clarify any queries. This usually happens at the end of a module or block. So now we've covered the different aspects of an integrated med school. And finally, we're going to look at how you could know if the integrated teaching style is for you and how you can prepare for an integrated med school. So the first thing is to get as much work experience as possible because integrated schools are centered around practical exposure through placements and work experience will give you a good idea of what to expect. Another important thing to note is that in integrated schools, you will be going on clinical placement very early on. And at this stage, you may not know everything there is to know about disease 
diseases and medicine so you may feel a bit lost and you may end up shadowing doctors more than actually performing any skills yourself and that's more similar to work experience than an actual placement so it's important to keep that in mind um another thing that i'd like to mention is um of course you need to get work experience to mention that in your personal statement and to talk about it in your interviews and to show admissions officers that you know what medicine is like but even after the october 15 deadline if you find some good work experience opportunities make sure to go for them if you have the time because you will learn something from every single clinical placement that you can get in every single work experience that you can get your hands on of course um we have a bank of work experience resources on our website so make sure to check that out and the link will also be in our description box below and number 2 engage in self directed learning now in an integrated school you will learn things in lectures and you will learn things in clinical placements as well when you see cases on your placement you will have to come back and look into that case in more detail look at that disease and it may not have been something that you covered in your lectures so self directed learning is something really important in med school and you need to have that self motivation organization and time management to do that so definitely work on developing those skills if you think an integrated teaching style is for you um a great way to practice self directed learning at this stage is by engaging in extra reading so going through scientific papers and journals reading books about medicine watching tv shows movies and listening to podcasts and you can find extra reading resources on our website as well and as usual it will be linked in our description box below now we're just going to end with some pros and cons of integrated medicine So the first pro is that um you have early clinical contact and that mimics the workplace once you qualify and this is incredibly useful. You also have a systems based approach and this allows you to link different disciplines and this also helps you think critically because you are making all these connections and links between different aspects of medicine anatomy physiology pharmacology and so on and you look at medicine holistically and this helps deepen your understanding and also improve your memory because you're making all these connections in your brain. However as usual everything has cons so one of the cons is that there is an intense workload this is definitely true for any medical school but you will have to balance your timetable from lectures as well as placements and so on and so another con is that you will need good organization and time management skills to manage all of these different aspects of your timetable and lastly you may feel unprepared during the first few years of your placement and that's because you just haven't learned enough about medicine and you should expect that feeling of unpreparedness and you should also expect that doctors and other healthcare workers may not trust you to actually do much work in your first few years simply because you are not skilled enough however keep in mind that this definitely does change as you progress through med school maybe in your first couple of years you wouldn't be allowed to do much and you would just be observing however in your later years you will actively be taking histories you will be looking at cases trying to diagnose patients looking at treatment plans taking bloods and so on so that's it for today's session and those are all of our objectives thank you so much for watching today's video if you found today's video useful then make sure to like share and subscribe and comment down below any other video suggestions that you may have for us see you in the next video